Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Tony again with Shinsho Yoga. And this week I'd like to talk about uh, an article that I just read the other day that stated that Christianity and yoga were incompatible. Uh, it was an article in the BBC News uh, the other day on Friday. And it said that the Greek, or excuse me, Greek Orthodox Church rules yoga is incompatible with Christianity. Yoga has no place in the life of Christians. The governing body of the church has ruled. It said it intervened after Greek media recommended yoga as a way to combat stress during coronavirus quarantine. Other religions has also advised against the practice in the past. I am not here to tell you today whether it is or whether it isn't, I am just going to here to tell you today about what yoga is and a little bit how I grew up and I'm going to let you make your decisions based on spirituality of what's best for you because I don't agree with anyone ever telling anyone how to be or how to do anything. Those are always decisions that you have to make and have to come from you. So anyone that tells anyone that this is the way to be I immediately will steer away from because control, especially through fear, nothing good comes from that. So let me talk a little bit about yoga, a little bit about me and how I got to where I am and a little bit about the spirituality involved with all of this. Uh, I was raised Christian. I was raised Presbyterian, which I often refer to as Catholic light, all the religion, half the guilt. And uh, I you know, went my whole childhood to a local Presbyterian church from baptized there from when I was a boy until graduating, you could say, from Sunday school and when you go through your reborn ceremony, et cetera, et cetera. The biggest thing I remember from my church, though, and going there was the level of hypocrisy that I saw. There were people there that went every Sunday and put on a wonderful show as the pastor would do his sermon in and often stand up and make whatever comments they had to make and asking for this and that for others and put on a very pious view, very pious show. And then once it was over, they went right back to who they were, basically an asshole. So this made me look into other things in my life because that's not what the pastor was saying. That was not what the words of Jesus were saying. Right? The words that Jesus was saying was telling people to every day live their life in kindness and love in each moment, not just in church. Uh, I eventually made my way into Buddhism and I am now a lay ordained Zen Buddhist. And Buddhism has very little to do with a, a religion. In certain cultures, it's much more religion-like, but true Buddhism really has nothing to do with religion. It's a philosophy of life. Buddhism really doesn't talk about God at all. It's entirely up to you to come to that determination. But Buddhism does come from yoga, right? And the roots of yoga uh, are intertwined with every other spirituality in the area. You know, the the roots of yoga, how yoga was started five to seven thousand years ago was the basis of Indian spirituality of the common people. And your your basic yogi, the ascetic, right, that guy who lived in a cave somewhere, you know, living that spiritual life, the, the point of view was that uh, we were our bodies encumbered our spiritual side, right? And they looked through all of these different purging processes to be able to weaken the body enough to release the spiritual power, right? So many of the things that were done in yoga at the time and, and other ascetic practices were designed towards that. Like the asana that we do today in our physical practice of yoga wasn't done like this now. You know, we go through, especially a vinyasa, you go through this flow and you're burning calories and you're getting up your circulation and building strength and flexing, uh, increasing the flexibility of your body where they would go into a posture and spend hours in it and a headstand as a way of purging, right? Trying to weaken the body to release the spiritual uh, power that we have. And this is where the Buddha comes in. 
Because when the Buddha goes around India to learn all these spiritual practices, because he doesn't understand suffering and why people suffer, right? He starts doing these ascetic practices, right? Practices. And he learns that there's no end to this this practice. Like you could, there's no end to weakening the body until you die. And that was kind of the the goal of these ascetics, is right? Is that the idea was that you'll weaken the body and you release the pre, the spiritual power, and then eventually you pass on. But then karma brings you back, and you just this never-ending cycle. And this made no sense to the Buddha, right? The Buddha uh, said that. Why would I do all that? There's no sense to life then, right? Because you can't weaken the body enough and live an everyday life, right? Without just dropping dead, right? You weaken the body, right? And then you're going to, in order to continue this practice, you're going to have to go back and eat and strengthen the body. And you're going to have to have a house and a job to make money or whatever you needed to do at the time to be able to survive, right? And then come back to the practice. It was a never-ending cycle. And the Buddha said... I just want to know what it is about being in the moment, right? In this moment to be the best version of myself that I can be, right? And he always exemplified being kind and being loving to ourselves and to others. Everything was about kindness. Everything was about love in some way, shape, or form. Now understand at that time, if you read maybe words of the Buddha from different things, they may not read that way to you because you weren't alive 2,500 years ago. In our day and age now, this is 2020, you know, people want to look at history through our lens. You can't. You have to look at it through the lens of the time. Right? And the analogies and parables that were given by ancient spiritual teachers are done through that time period to speak to those people. So they may not make full sense to us now, but there, there's, a, there's a reason behind them that will speak across generations again, and it's that love and that kindness. And that's what the Buddha offered, being loving and kind to ourselves, living in the moment that the best thing you could do for another is to be present in the moment that you're in with them and being there. You know, if you learn the, the Buddha's precepts, you know, a vow not to kill, a vow not to be withholding, a vow not to steal. Those sound familiar? Not different than the Ten Commandments just put into a different context for a different people at a different time. Now, if you look over at the Bible, right, um, again, different areas are going to interpret it differently. But in my opinion, if you read the book of Matthew and read the words of Jesus, and I've read the words of Jesus, and I've read the words of the Buddha, they're not different. They're the same. They're just said differently for different groups of people during a different time period. The Buddha was 2,500 years ago. The Christ was 2,000 years ago. The Buddha was in India. Christ was in the Middle East. They're close by our standards today, but back then, that's a world away. And India is a big country. So in my opinion, the words that, that these taught, and again, Buddhism, comes from yoga. Right? They all intertwine. They all interconnect. Right? No different than one than the other. Just presented differently to different peoples at different times. The modern take on spirituality incorporates pretty much all of this. The, the modern spiritual point of view is that uh, we are spiritual beings in a physical body, no different than the ancient yogis thought. And what we come to this world for is, is this world is a training ground, for lack of a better term. It doesn't really exist in some that's considered a dream world. We come down into these physical bodies, into these limited forms, to see if we can transcend these forms and become our full spiritual selves while into this limited form. What a task! What a challenge in this limited body that we have with our limited ability to do things because in our true natural spiritual state, we are unlimited. But here we are limited. And the goal, 
goal is always a loose term, is to transcend that state, to reach that area of enlightenment. We are where we are able to take advantage of our full spiritual being in a physical form. And this is where the idea of karma comes in. So, what is karma? Right? You'll hear it all the time. I'm sure you, you see it on plenty of signs and places and people say, well, karma got him. The concept in spirituality isn't that different than the concept through most Eastern um, philosophies and religions. The concept of karma in, in modern spirituality, right, is again, we're coming down to this planet, to this dream, to this school, to transcend our physical being and become spiritual beings, right? We repeat this cycle until we're successful. That's karma, right? You're coming back. That's reincarnation. You come back time and again, right? So in if this life, you're not successful and you do a lot of bad things, well, you might come back in a different form, in a different way to be able to experience what happened in that life so you learn and you know. So the next time you come back, you don't do that. It's not a punishment. It's training. For us to grow past who we are, right? In the, even in the spiritual realm where we're from, it's, 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 it's continual growth, right? This is an option that we do to grow and become more than what we are. And we come here and we take these turns over and over and over until we are able to finally do it. And when we are finally able to do it, that karmic cycle stops and we graduate, for lack of a better term. It's not really the best term to use on that. But that's all I can think of in the moment. What's the goal of Christianity? To become more like Christ. To be loving and kind. He came back to, didn't he? In his own way. Right? Again, I'm not here to tell you uh, what to choose, what to believe. I'm not here to question your beliefs. That's not my position. Who am I to tell anybody who to be or what to do? I can only do what's right for me and then share with you what I've learned and you take from that what serves you and you get rid of the rest. Again, that doesn't mean take what's comfortable and get rid of what's uncomfortable because we often need what is uncomfortable for growth. But in my point of view, in my opinion, these are all the same thing. They all, everything in life intertwines. What the Christ offered, what the Buddha offered, what the original yogis and any of these religions offer Right. If they're based in love, they're all the same. And yes, there are factions of these ones that are more fanatical than other. I don't want to get into that. That's that's not even something that I would discuss. Right. But the purity of it, they're all based on love. So in the end, in my opinion, it really doesn't matter who you follow or or which path you take as the founder of the martial art one of the martial arts i studied called aikido a sensei said there are many paths to the top of the mountain the summit is all the same how you get there is individual to you right if the summit is love the path is that matters is the one that you take that helps you realize that which is not the same as my path or the person next to you and you have to let them walk it on their own and learn their own way. You can't teach them. So I would be mindful of any groups or people that tell you that you are right or wrong in that or what you can and cannot do or will try to control you on the basis of fear. I would, be, I would caution against that. I would make the decisions myself. Be a critical thinker. Go out and research for yourself. The internet is wonderful. There's lots of people like myself who says that I'm not saying I'm the be-all, end-all, but who will offer what they know and can share it with you. There's also people who will offer all kinds of crazy things, right? And maybe somebody's watching this right now. I don't get too many people watching, so probably not that many. Uh, but my watch and go, this guy's nuts. It's okay. You make the decisions that are best for you. 
Don't let others rule your mind. Don't let others rule how you should act. Know what's right for you. And that is always going to come back to the practice. Right? Every single one of my classes, everything that I talk about, always comes back to the practice. Right? If you've been in my classes, you know how I emphasize the breath work, the breathing, the following the breath. And at the end of every video, I say, allow the thoughts to arise, allow them to pass by and return to the breath time and again. That's what we do in Buddhism. That's Zen, Zen Buddhist. Right? Just be present in the moment. Right? You can take that moment for pause without reacting Right? Without being pulled into emotion, being pulled into the past for depression, being pulled in the future for anxiety, just be present. You can recognize when people do these things, and then you can see that they're doing them from their own fears, their own damage, their own hurt. And you can have compassion for them. And realize it's sad that they're that hurt. And you can just let them talk and go, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. And just extend them love. Let go of the outcome. And then go about your life. That's my point of view. You can take from that what serves you. You get rid of the rest. So, just a thought to share this week on that article I read. You might want to look it up. It's on BBC News if you find it interesting. But I would say be a critical thinker. Do the research for yourself. Learn. Just don't take anything blanket from anyone, especially if they're doing it from a place of fear. And in the end, even if they are, know they're doing it because there's something that's missing inside them. And show them love for it. And breathe. That's all I have for this week. Thanks again for watching. Namaste. Namaste.